If you are a mobile phone technician and you are interested in learning how to do deep troubleshooting, testing components, and understanding everything better, then watch this video to the end. So, taking a look here, you can see that we have a mobile phone PCB here. And uh, yeah, if you are not new to mobile repairing, you should know that just from the surrounding components, this should be a, a power supply IC, a PMU IC, power IC. That's what I'm talking about. So what I want you to learn in this video, I want you to learn the proper way to test components around the power IC. Specifically, how to test capacitors on a mobile PCB. So taking a look at the, the surroundings of this power IC, you need to be able to differentiate which component is which you get. So you can see these big components here, they, they are having this type of a solid interface. The color, what's the color, is it gray? They're having this gray color, right? So these are not capacitors. A lot of you, they call these capacitors. I don't know why, but you need to be able to identify these. You need to be able to differentiate which of these components is which then to know exactly how you can test them. So these are inductors. You can also call, call them coils. And these ones that are surrounding the power manager IC are called bulk coils. Bulk coils, I don't know why they are being called bulk coils, but I will tell you exactly how they work, how you should test them what you should expect when testing them you get and also we have this other type here these are also inductors coils you get and then we have capacitors you should be able to these these like just the basic for you to be able to repair you need to be able to identify capacitors in a mobile pcb and how to test them okay so talking about bulk coils so these bulk coils are to receive the voltage that, that it gets from the, the PMU IC when the phone is being triggered. Filter those voltages. These components are very important. Filter and stabilize the, those voltages before it gets to its des destination. Which we have different uh, coils here, different uh, lines, power rails here. You can see that there are some here that are the, for the V core. Some that are for the VGPU and some that are for the the VMem V memory. You get so you will have some with 1.2 volt, 0 0.8 volt, uh, 1.8 volt. And to test them, when you are performing a cold testing to see if any of them is shorting, I see a lot of technicians. They normally do perform the cold testing, red probe to the ground, and uh, they go ahead. And switch on my multimeter. And they do that, they go ahead, test. You are getting a beep, right? They test, they are getting a beep. And yeah, they will be like, okay, this component is bad, I have to remove it. It's shorting, right? Ah, first, the reason why most of them remove this is because they think that it's a capacitor. Second, even though you know now that it's not a capacitor, you are asking why is it beeping? It's not beeping because it's shorting. If you take a look at my multimeter, I always say that you don't just listen to a beep. You look at the multimeter, you look at the reading from your multimeter to see if it's a, a complete shot or just a small, a low ohm reading that you are getting. So testing this doesn't mean that this one is bad. First, you need to understand that just from the look of things and from the track right here, this should be the V core, but coil right here, which means that it's connected to the to the power supply. It's connected to the power supply of the CPU. Power supply of the CPU. It's connected to the CPU power supply circuit. Some of these things are very hard to explain in a, a smooth way so the reason why you are getting a low reading here is not because there is a short in this line is because this particular line is connected to the to the to the track 
of the CPU, which is the vCore line. So, which comes to these components here, which are CPU capacitors. I've made a lot of videos about CPU capacitors. So these capacitors are always beeping. In most cases, they're always beeping. And if in case you don't know how to test these capacitors, these particular ones, you can see that we have like four points right here. You always have to keep in mind that, so anytime you are testing this type of capacitors with four points, you need to keep in mind that these bigger sites are the positive, these ones are the negative. So talking about CPU capacitors, the reason why most of these will be is just because of the the integrated circuit in the CPU, everything is being chopped up. And also they're using, a, these lines are using a very low amount of current, 0 0.7 to 1.2 volt, which are the V-core voltages, right? So because they're beeping, it doesn't really mean that, yeah, it's bad. You don't have to remove in fact. It's very hard for a capacitor to get damage around this section because it uses a very low current. And also, if any of this is bad, it can cause some voltages here that will damage the CPU. The CPU is, it will easily get damaged before these capacitors work here. And there are times, like I said, you need to take a look at the reading from your multimeter. If you are testing, If you are testing, you can see the reading that we are getting. That's not a complete shot right there. If you are testing, then you are getting a complete shot from both sides of the capacitor. Either the CPU is bad or that capacitor is bad. So how do you know if the capacitor is bad? If you have trouble shoot to the extent that you don't just know the exact component that is bad, you cannot tell which component is bad if it's the capacitor because you can't just go around uh, removing these capacitors and injecting voltage here when troubleshooting the shot around this area because even if there is a capacitor shot in here because there are a lot connected with a uh, doesn't need a high amount of current it's very hard to inject voltage here because injecting high voltage is going to damage either this more of these capacitors or the CP itself so the best way that I do to know if these capacitors are okay when I'm getting a shot here, I remove the CPU and test. The CPU also get, gets damaged and cause a shot around this area. Okay, so when we are testing, looking for a shot here, you can see that's a capacitor. You can see the reading. That's a high reading, right? So which means that it's okay that's a high reading which means that it's okay that's a low reading which still means that it's okay so there are some inductors right here that will give a high reading it all depends on the the, the line the track that they are connected to so it's still you need to keep in mind that there are some that will give high and there are some that will give low reading so which is still okay and uh, just to make you understand how everything is being connected. I will just show you a, a diagram from my book here just for you to understand everything better. I will show you a diagram from my book here which is uh, the same circuit. This is a block diagram but it's the same thing that we are talking about here. So if you take a look, this is the right page. So if you take a look here, you will see that we have uh, we have the power IC here and we have the CPU here. So here I talked about the power supplies of the CPU, the output power supply, the output voltages of the power manager ICs. And all these uh, lines that you have seen right here, I've named them. I've named them and if you use your schematic diagram you'll be able to find this. I've talked about that in my professional level course. How you can use the block diagram to find these lines in a schematic diagram. From schematic diagram you will know exactly where to test in the mobile PCB. So here I talked about the V core, the V modem, the V GPU, the clock reset and the PS hold signal. So these V, these that I'm talking about right here are actually the power supplies which are the bulk power supplies that we just talked about here.
So like I said, it can either be a uh, one bot coil can either be that of the V core, the V GPU, the V memory, which are all 1.2 volt to 0.7 volt. You will just see a few of them using their schematic diagram to see if the V, the the V memory, which is the high uh, power supply of the, the, the RAM. You can just use your, your, your power supply, you can just use your schematic diagram to know exactly where a particular line is heading to. But you need to keep in mind that these lines are using, these lines are using a very small current which can uh, beep anytime, which can beep in most cases. So when you are testing, looking for shots, you are looking for the circuits that are using a high amount of voltage. I'm not saying that these lines cannot short. There are shots. In fact, I have a lot of videos where I've removed uh, shots around the, the CPU. But in most cases, if you take a look at that particular capacitor that I removed, you will see that it's not the V core, not the V modem, not the V GPU. And that's basically how it is. So you need to take a uh, good note when you are testing the shots around the CPU, testing the vehicle voltages, because it's around the power manager IC. It doesn't mean that, okay, because you are getting a, a, a low reading, because you are getting a beep, it's bad. That's not how it is. It all depends on the line that it's connected to, where, where the, the, the power rail is heading to. And that's how it is. Well, I'm seeing it's my right here. Like I said, you can uh, get this book. You can get this book, the Block Diagram Master, for just nineteen dollars. A soft copy. I know that you, most people watching this, are out of Cameroon, so you can just get the soft copy for just nineteen dollars. And if you go through the soft copy, it's good. You can, yeah, you can get my courses. So you get my courses when you are through with the courses. You can get the book. Everything is very important. Either the basic professional level course and all that. Well. Thank you and see you soon. I will keep dropping more content.